Given how many baseball games are played every season, there's always bound to be a game that looks like a football score by the end of it. The Pirates and Tigers played through one of these games last season, which I made a video on. But this game is not from any recent season. In fact, when this game occurred, the in-game graphics looked like this. Remember these graphics? And as you can see, this game involves the Florida Marlins and the Colorado Rockies. By the way, shout out to Baseball Cinema. All the highlights from the game are from their channel, and they have plenty of other interesting highlights from previous eras. So go check them out. Alright, let's head back to 2008. This game took place on the 4th of July. By this point in the season, the Rockies were essentially out of the playoffs, and the Marlins were sitting around 500. Although, it's worth noting that neither team made the playoffs. However, both teams were involved in walk-off finishes within the prior week. On June 29th and June 30th, the Marlins won both their games on walk-offs. And in the first game of this series, the Rockies walked off in the 11th inning, a single by Ryan Spielborgs. The starting pitchers for this game were Greg Reynolds for the Rockies and Scott Olson for the Marlins. I forgive you if you don't recognize these names. Just know that one of these guys was playing well before this game, and the other guy wasn't. But by the end of the night, both of their ERAs would inflate. And really quickly, here are the lineups for each team. I'm not going to go through each player, so pause the video if you want. Alright, top of the first. Oh, Hanley Ramirez has already hit the ball to center field. Yeah, there was really no other way for this game to start. The Marlins were clearly not happy with losing by walk-off the previous night. Jeremy Hermida walks and Jorge Cantu is hit right after. Reynolds would produce his first out, but then he allowed an RBI single to Mike Jacobs. But this shouldn't be a problem. Cody Ross popped out. And the next batter is Matt Trainer, whose OPS is 604. Oh, well, that's a bit of a surprise. And now the Marlins have a win expectancy of 85%. Look how sad this fan is when he catches the ball. I doubt that's the first in game ball he's caught, but if it was, he waited his whole life to catch a ball, and it was an opposing hitter's home run. That's kinda sad. Okay, I'm spending too much time on a fake backstory, let's get out of this half inning. Bottom of the first, walk-off hero Ryan Spielborgs hits a double, and then Clint Barmes drives him in to put the Rockies on the board. And well, that's all that happened. In the top of the second, Ramirez and Cantu both hit singles. After a lengthy mound visit, Josh Willingham hit a double, which actually turned into a ground rule double because a fan took the ball. Although, both runners were allowed to score. After a walk, Reynolds would be taken out of the game. With this beautiful final stat line, the ball was given to Cedric Bowers, who had actually made his debut a couple of days prior. He got the Rockies out of the inning, but the Marlins went into the bottom of the second with a 7-1 lead and a 91% win expectancy. With two outs, Tulowitzki hit a double, and after a walk, Spilborgs and Barmes both hit singles that would add runs to the board. Like the first inning, the Rockies went into the next inning down by four runs. Well, nothing of note happens in either half of the inning. They must have mistakenly used the balls that were actually in the humidor. Well, in the top of the fourth, Cantu began the inning with a single. A wild pitch, a walk, and a single by Mike Jacobs would load the bases. And on the first pitch to Cody Ross, he would hit a bases clearing double. The score is 10 to 4. The win expectancy for the Marlins is at 96%. Bowers would be taken out for Luis Vizcaino, 
Well, as expected, the pylon would continue, as Alfredo Amezaga and Hanley Ramirez both hit RBI doubles, and Jeremy Hermida hit an RBI single. Just like that, it's 13-4 in the fourth inning. After the single, the Marlins' win expectancy was at 99%. Luckily, Scott Olson wasn't from Atlanta, so the only run he allowed in the bottom of the fourth was a home run to Ryan Spielborgs. And fortunately for the Rockies, they were able to hold the Marlins to no runs in the fifth. Would the Rockies take advantage? Surprisingly, yes. Matt Holliday hit a solo home run almost immediately. Garrett Atkins and Jeff Baker both got base hits. Then, the catcher in the midst of a breakout season, Chris Iannetta, crushed a ball past the outfield seats. Now it's 13-9, and remember, we're in Coors Field with four innings to go. Anything can happen. Fortunately for the Rockies, they got the Marlins to go down 1-2-3 in the 6th. And in the bottom half of the inning, the Marlins starter, Scott Olsen, was finally taken out of the game, bringing in Taylor Tankersley, who wasn't exactly having a great season. And well, this would be his second to last appearance of the season. Ryan Spielborgs began the inning with a home run who at this point was guaranteed a hit every at-bat. Same with Clint Barmas, who hit a single right after. And on a full count, Garrett Atkins doubles the Rockies' win expectancy with a two-run home run. As the Rockies still have two outs left in the inning, Joe Nelson was brought into the game, but Baker and Iannetta would both walk. After Brad Hopp strikes out, Troy Tulowitzki is up to the plate. Tulo ended the season with some interesting clutch stats. He was great when the game was within one run, but he wasn't very good when there was two outs and runners in scoring position. So which stat line would beat out the other? Change up at 80. This ball's hit well left center field. Cody Ross is going to get there. Well, at least the Rockies are only behind one run. Punch out, but more than likely. Two pitch to Gonzo. Five run lead again for the Marlins. I swear, Coors Field is ridiculous. All right, let's backtrack a little bit. Cantu and Willingham both start the inning with doubles. Then, after an intentional walk, Cody Ross hits a two RBI double. Manny Corpus was brought in as a result, and Tulowitzki was taken out of the game bringing in Omar Quintanilla for the double switch. Well, unfortunately for the Rockies, the pylon kept on coming, as 40-year-old Luis Gonzalez hit a 2-RBI single. The Marlins once again had a win expectancy of 96%. Finally, in the bottom of the seventh inning, Quintanilla hit a leadoff double in his first at-bat of the game. And because no one wanted to pitch to Spielborgs, the pitcher threw the ball as far away as possible. Logan Kensing would come in to pitch. He would allow a walk, and Rockies star Matt Holliday would come up to the plate. Just like that, the Rockies are back in the game. And with no outs recorded, the Rockies could do something. Well, okay, a grand slam was more than enough. But this missed opportunity could lead to the Marlins doing something in the eighth inning. Well, they did nothing. This must mean that the Rockies come back in the bottom of the eighth. Nope. No, they didn't. Well, can the Marlins at least extend their lead in the ninth? No, they cannot. Is the game really going to end like this? Imagine all this buildup for no climax. Well, at least the Rockies have the heart of the order coming up. Clint Barmas started the potential rally with his fourth hit of the day, a single to center field. Holiday took a break from the home runs and hit a single of his own. For the first time in the whole game, the win expectancy was on the Rockies' side. 
Next is Garrett Atkins. He would end the day with a game leading five hits. This would be his final hit, a game tying single. Up to the plate, Jeff Baker. Shattered back, Bates gotta get up the line. There's one, it's five, Hanley Ramirez, the player who started the game with a first pitch home run, dropped the ball in the most critical moment of the game. Now the bases are loaded, for Chris Iannetta. Truthfully, I would have preferred a walk-off Grand Slam, but this works too. This would be the largest comeback in team history, and well, the WPA chart clearly illustrates that. The Marlins were in control for virtually the whole game but some late-inning heroics, which of course the Rockies were known for at this point, would send the fans home happy. While realistically this game didn't matter in the long run, this was truly one of the wildest games of the 21st century. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.